Okay, I think we are ready to rock. So good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar on the remote working experience. So before we get started, uh, just a very brief introduction about who we are. Essentially, HiBob is a people management platform and it is designed to centralize the employee experience in one single communication hub. But we also have an HR, talent and culture community, which is driven by monthly meetups, webinars just like this, blogs and ebooks. So last week, we actually had a London meetup discussing the topic of global culture with a focus on how to motivate, retain and engage your people, no matter where they are in the world. And now, today we are here to continue the conversation by looking at the remote working experience with Jamie Bray, who is the director and founder of Braber Group. So Jamie struck us as an ideal person to talk about the remote working experience, as he has a lot of expertise in sourcing remote candidates from the very start of the employee life cycle. On top of that, he's a strong believer in positive, healthy working cultures, and it's something he really champions as the director of Braver Group. So, as I'm sure Jamie will explain, this webinar is designed to be an open forum, so please do feel free to type in any questions in the box, which you should be able to see on your screen. He'll do his best to, to answer the questions as we go along, and I will also make sure we have some time at the end for a Q&A. So, without further ado, Let's pass over to you, Jamie. Thank you, Verity. Good morning, ladies and gents. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you for uh, logging in this morning um, and sort of engaging with myself. Um, as uh, Verity said, my name's Jamie. Uh, I am a director and co-founder of a, a recruitment agency called uh, Braber Group. Um, one of the big things when I was approached um, to come on and do this uh, topic um, was something that it was something that I really believe in. Um, I truly believe in in the environment of uh, people by people, and happy people make a good work life balance. And certainly, remote working is something that I believe. Now, a little bit about myself, a little bit about the company, and then we can uh, go into this full throttle. Um, so, as I say, my my background is. Uh, a, a broken soccer player um, that found a different way of um, making his way in life, uh, fell into the recruitment industry. Um, one of my big believers is people by people, as I've already said, um, and worked in a huge corporate industry where I succeeded. Um, but just felt that actually there was some of the basic errors that were being missed. Um, one of the big um, strong things that I certainly believe that we've installed here as a company at Braver is it's all about you. Um, before you move on to uh, you know any client and et cetera, and you listen to people, uh, you need to listen to what they want to talk about. You need to listen to about actually who they are and what it's about. And also the three values that we use in every single um, situation is we listen we have two ears one mouth we keep to our words so we don't make over the top promises and actually we're factual we're we're to the point so that is who we are we work across multi sectors that you'll see at the bottom um and actually it was a great opportunity to to get the chance to come in to talk about um you know remote working and recruitment um as it sort of says in the uh, the bar in the in the pla in the bottom sorry um if you're in a happy workplace you perform better that's a fact um as a company we offer dual opportunity for our staff to work from remote and home so they always have a desk available if they want to come into the office but they always have the opportunity if they want to work from home they can do uh not only as a company do we support firms who have remote workers we also advise businesses on changing their stance on it as well and that's something that I'll break into a little bit more um, later on when we go through to sort of explain actually how we as a business um, have supported businesses making the, the 
the transition from stereotypical nine to five office environment to actually what I believe is is the way of the future um, in the workplace. So just uh, going to set out the agenda for what we're going to look at today. So four very simple agendas, um, how to pitch in the benefits of remote working for your organisation, how to measure the success of the remote workers, how to attract top ta uh, remote talent and how to manage, engage and motivate remote teams. Now, as Verity's already said, the one thing about myself is I am not sitting here to tell you that I am an expert. In fact, there's facts and figures that I will share with you, which have been taken by professionals that have done within the research department. But I want to talk about my experiences, my knowledge, rather than telling you what's right and wrong. Please feel free on the left hand corner obviously to engage in terms of the questions. Uh, the plan is as we go through, if people want to add questions on that topic, please feel free and I'll answer them. Or at the end, as Verity said, uh, we can have a, a question and answers area and, and please do share everyone's experiences because it's massively important that everybody is learning from one another. Um, if you have a good idea, yes, it's good sometimes to keep it to yourself in your culture, but actually I believe that the bigger picture for people to share information is something which is um, massively important. So moving on. Pitching the benefit of remote working. Now for non-remote workers, I believe there is a common misconception, which I believe is as the following. People refer to them as lazy, antisocial, unmotivated, teleaddicts, hard to get hold of, not working. Is that true? Well, there may be some cases that people have duvet days. There may be cases that people have the moments where they're feeling lethargic. But I actually think that is all totally nonsense, because in my opinion, I personally believe that remote workings are fantastic and actually the reality from my side of the fence is the following. Now when we look at the personal benefits we're actually talking as the employees what do they get from them now obviously the first one on the top is we talk about uh, a no commute now factually um, in a study that was conducted in 2018 one in four people leave their jobs due to this reason also in london the average person based in working in central london will commute three hours a day. Now that is a huge amount of time. If you space that over a, a five day working week, that's a lot of hours that you don't get back. So straight away, that is one thing. Saving money, totally. The the uplift, if you were, for example, working in the cities, obviously there is a, a bigger cost than people that are working locally to their offices um, and not having to commute. Work-life balance, totally, it totally, totally is one of the big things that I believe and we champion uh, within my company and also we try and encourage um, businesses that we work with. Um, it's important, it's important and that falls very much nicely into the sort of the improves mental health. 31% um, per of people said they need an extra day a year just for their mental health. And I think this is a way that we are going, that more and more people's health is number one priority. Um, health, work-life balance, all these factors contribute to saving money, which means you have more money so you don't have to worry about too much about getting to work or living. Um, you know, the commute is stressing and missing the, the transport, the fact of getting something. Uh, certainly when we look at the train devastation that, is, uh, that we seem to have a lot certainly in uh, in the UK um, the the commute is not ideal so this all adds up to improving the mental health the trust goes without saying um, that actually when a company shows a huge amount of trust for you um, it I think it speaks volumes and also terms of prolonged career of an older workers totally when we look at the facts and figures of three hours a day um, that's 15 hours a week on average that a London commuter is doing that's 15 hours so on a on a four week working month that's that's 60 hours you know we're looking at that's uh, you know two and a bit days of life that could it be used elsewhere could it be used in a more productive way? Possibly, 
But now we've looked at the personal benefits, actually what we want to look at is the company benefits. And I think this is, as an employer, is, uh, is important because they work so well together. Um, increases employment talent pool. Now, as a recruiter, the talent pool is one of the most uh, important areas. Reason why? That's where you gain your talent. That is where people talk, they understand what you're about, how it works. Obviously, the savings on costings, which we've also talked, so it counteracts for both sides of the fence, personal commuting, obviously employees' expenses. Um, reduces absence. Reason why I say this, some people um, obviously are a little bit standoffish, but it's amazing. When you are off work, and I speak as my experience, if for the very rare days that I was unwell, um, when you're at home in that mindset, um, you know, if you're working in an office, it you do take yourself away from it. You get your head down. But actually, remote workers and certainly some of my guys that deem themselves as unwell, um, they will still get work done. They will still get work done because they're work proud, because they believe in the company. They believe in what you're doing and they're believing that actually this this creates. Um, Increases retention, that sort of goes hand in hand with, with all the other bits. Um, and obviously, carbon footprint. This is also something which is massive, certainly within London. Uh, we've seen the demonstrations in regards to what's what's going up there. Um, and actually, it, it's the way of the times. It's the way we're moving. Um, you know, it's actually been proven as well that remote workers work... 1.4 days more in a working month compared to an office life balance work um, based on someone working 38 hours a week. So actually productivity improving to, to go up. So just looking at those sides, I mean, feel free if anyone has any sort of questions that they want to uh, that they want to draw in um, on this, because, you know, I, I believe that engagement here is, is really interesting. Obviously, this is me talking about what I believe, what I see, what I hear and how people come across. Um, just sort of moving on um, to this side, it's not just a nice to have. Um, nearly one in three employees would switch jobs to work remotely. I think that says a lot. Um, and companies that support working from home could see a 10% increase in retention um, by 2020. And uh, another real interesting fact as well, which um, obviously looking a, a bit more into this, uh, millennials are actually the largest generation now in the workforce. So that kind of says a lot because what they are actually doing um, is changing the mentality. And actually there's a bigger mentality of this way of working because we are so lucky to have the technology that we do, which allows us to work like this. So actually um, it's kind of, in my opinion, we need to work with it. We need to swim with the ocean rather than trying to battle against the waves. So feel free, as I say, on the left hand side, feel free to chuck any questions on that. What I don't want to do is feel like I'm talking too much at you, um, but obviously keeping everybody uh, engaged on, on that front. OK, so now what we're doing is we're going to move on to our um, second part, which is measuring the success of remote employees. OK, so how do we measure success? Um, for me, personally, we live in the 21st century, which I've already said, um, and I believe actually measurables are very important, um, especially if you're working from home. Now, companies still use KPIs, people have budgets they have, they have time scales, um, etc. that people are managed to. But actually, from, from my point of view, okay, what is the most important thing? for people to to get a clear understanding of actually what what's going on you know what are people expecting what is the company you know and, and what does uh, success look like from both sides and how we, how is that measured so um for me um as a business uh, we work in obviously uh, a a target driven business um us personally we don't do kpis 
Uh, we don't do targets in that respect. Uh, we're all human beings. We all know what we need to do to do a good job and actually what we need to do to make um, Suffolk successful. Um, I don't need to babysit individuals and a lot of my staff will, will back that up as well because of ultimately um, these people are, you know, they are here to want to do a job. They're here to make money and ultimately they know what needs to be done. So certainly as it features in this slide is, you know, be clear from what, you know, you expect from your remote team. You know, if we're looking at certain targets, whether that is as you function as KPIs, is it customer satisfaction? Is it feedback through different platforms like FIFO, for example? Is it timescales? Actually being clear um, and understanding, you know, ultimately, how are how are we going to get there how are we on that journey what are the goals so sort of in terms of measuring the outputs they all vary um and and totally obviously about what i've already um, spoken about um we have the different platforms we we have different ways um but it's most important you know you, you create a trust um, in the company culture, the goals align with the outputs and performance, um, deliverables, everything is in there. Um, so, you know, it's it's massively important that we always set um, the outlay straight away. People have no hidden agenda. It's not a shock to people. And I believe, you know, talking to the amount of people that I do in regards um, to remote working, because it is really very much on the up. Um, you know what makes it for them how do they measure what what works and especially you know as a as it says at the bottom you know when both manager um, and employer are aligned to the same set of objectives there can be no doubt on what's expected so you set the clear objectives people understand what is expected from them and do you know what that brings out goals so always make sure especially for ro remote workers that is something um, that is always very clear. So uh, obviously no one else has any uh, sort of inputs or anything like that. So once again, um, ladies and gents, as I said, um, please don't hold me. Um, the facts absolutely more than happy to share with those but this is all talking about my experiences about understanding what will give better results and certainly you know talking about this clear understanding from the front that people understand exactly what is expected um, it's a clear set of objectives so um, no other comments on that one. So, OK, so we move on to something which obviously falls very nicely into what I do. Um, so attract top talent. OK, so it is a very unique world that we live in. And in terms of remote talent, how do we engage with these people? Now, it's very interesting. At the moment, um, we're dealing with a company at the moment that we are going through uh, a transition from office space to actually offering um, individuals to work remote. Um, it's uh, a company that are a very well established firm based in central London um, that have had uh, a sort of the old school opinion on what remote workers were, but actually we are educating. We're not telling, we're showing information, showing facts and figures, working with them to actually say, right, this is what we believe. Um, this is why it will enhance. Um, and actually with that, it comes attraction. OK, so how do we make this attractive? How is remote working attractive for individuals? And this falls in quite nicely to, to the following subject, which is obviously once you have that top talent, how do we engage? How do we keep them locked in to be a part of your organisation? So in terms of uh, attracting and hiring remote talent, the big thing in this day and age is platforms. And when I say platforms, social media is one of the most powerful tool. And certainly LinkedIn is, is a wonderful tool for this. Um, 
attracting talent um yes is sometimes you have to go into that marketplace and you have to find those people and ultimately that is what my job is but it's very much like selling a car now if individuals walk along the road and they see a car pulled alongside the road they like the look of the car they then get on their phone they then google that car they then find out where that car is the one they want etc they know exactly what they're looking for they know what they want actually it's very much the same people will come in they will talk about the wonderful company that they work for and actually how that is engaged with them. So someone might be in the pub or a restaurant talking about a wonderful company that they work for, that says Braber, for example. How do we then, how do they then follow that through? And it's exactly the same process. People get on their phone. They will get onto social media. They will then do their own homework about who that individual is. And especially the wonderful world of Google that will actually allow you to interact and see. So when it's very important that, you know, sharing the success stories of your remote workers on the career page and social channels, um, not just internally, because that is massively important that people are seeing that they get results, but actually for the big wide world, people need to know actually, hey, we're here, this is how we do things, this is how we work. And actually, word of mouth becomes a really um, successful project, and especially within recruitment. People believe that it's a day that actually, what we do is we chuck a load of adverts out and we hope for the best. Actually, in fact, what we do as a company, all our remote clients that we are remotely working for, we do not put any job adverts out. And people say, that's crazy. You know, how do people know? Because one, what you do is you go out and find those people. You go in, talk to them um, and actually find out what makes them tick rather than just people that are looking for jobs and oh, I've had enough. So actually the sharing the success stories of your moat channels, um, you know, is, is, is massive. Um, obviously, off tar um, offer targeted perks, that is a given. Um, in this day and age, we a lot of people work in, you hit targets, you get rewarded. Some people are commission, there's team incentives, um, there's company incentives, however that works. But don't just be the same. Always try and think outside the box. And this is something that we will uh, talk about on our next subject when we come on, about encouraging people to offer a different environment, offer different incentives, offering different ways of actually keeping people in um, and locking them in because a happy work environment means that people will remain longer. Um, you know, and and also the, the biggest factor is we are, the remote worker is still, a large um, sector, but actually it's not the biggest. So actually we need to then look back and say to ourselves, okay, what is um, the ideal remote persona? What are we looking for? What makes these people, so we have 10 people that excel at this, okay, what do they all have in common? How does it that they work? How does it work? So actually you're then creating, also, one of the things that I'm I'm personally a big believer in um, is actually then opening up to non-remote workers. Um, and once again, this is talking about an experience that I've had. Um, we were we work with a client that actually um, hires remote workers. And the roles are remote working, but they take people that aren't actually remote workers. Uh, the reason why they don't want any misconception or uh, preception of who and how they are when people come into this work and placement. So actually you can create your own culture, create your own people and actually create the, um, the way that you want them to work rather than people coming in who's already had a preconception of how they work and how they did it at their old company. So it's actually a very different way. And, and also, I can't emphasize this enough. Listen to your staff. I'm sure everybody does, but sometimes people actually go a little bit off piste and actually fall back and go, do you know what? Actually, I need to listen to my staff. Actually, what works for them, what doesn't work for them, and actually how how can we encourage this? 
Um, so that's that's kind of my saying on on that side. We're we're going to move on, um, and actually, um, this is something which um, kind of falls into the part that I'm quite passionate about. Um, which is actually engaging and motivating remote teams. How do we do it? Um, I can honestly say I have spoken to people before that said, oh, well, what I do is every day I copy and paste the quote by Muhammad Ali. I quote, uh, copy and paste a quote from uh, Bill Gates and I send it to my team every morning. Wow. What, is is that your form of motivating? Is that the form of engaging, um, you know, and, and encouraging people? I think not. Um, I actually think there, there's a there's a bigger side to it. Um, and actually, I believe, you know, the communication is 100% key for this. Now, slightly off top, topic um, and something that I, I truly strongly believe in. Um, two two things really invest in good technology um i totally believe this is this is something and definitely in the way that we work now if you have poor technology it actually doesn't give um your staff actually the the best credibility to do the best possible job um and actually, it's really interesting. I, I watched recently a television program that, uh, in the UK. We have something called the, the Hairy Bikers that are two chaps based from Newcastle that are big chaps that go around on, on bikes everywhere, um, travel around doing a cooking program. Um, and recently, I actually watched an episode um, and, it, and it really made me think. They, they've recently done the Route 66 on motorbikes and it has been about five or six different episodes. They finished in Las Vegas um, in the last episode where they actually went to a top, top, uh, one of the top Michelin chefs there, uh, a French chap who worked his way up. And it really got me thinking because after interviewing this chap, where they were actually talking about mashed potato of all things. Um, and actually, he said one um, sort of quote that I believe is absolutely right. It had been voted the best mashed potato in the world. And the question was, how did you get the best mashed potato in the world? The response was, we give the best ingredients. We give the best ingredients, which creates the best mashed potato. And actually, that got me thinking. That totally got me thinking in the way of, actually, this is so right. If you give your staff the best equi uh, equipment, it's only um, and the best support network that is only down to you as an employer for failing them and not allowing them to actually progress. Because if you give the good systems, if you make it fit for purpose and you give all the other channels that allow people to work. Now, this isn't me encouraging people to go out and spend hundreds of thousands of, uh, of money. Once again, this is this is my personal opinion. But if you give people all the best opportunities to use the best products, not only do they feel valued that they see themselves as well, well I'm obviously worth it. But actually, the bigger picture is and you're giving them the opportunity to champion themselves, to perform to the highest level. If they then fail because it's not quite right for them in the bigger picture of actually how everything's right, fine. But ultimately, you're giving them all the best opportunity to 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 do, um, you know, what's right. And obviously, share what you're up to, um, whether it will be what's happening in, in your local office, um, for dinner last night, making time for personal exchanges is essential because we work in, um, and certainly I speak as a, as a remote worker as well, um, it's very difficult obviously keeping in touch and, and talking and communicating, but actually having that type of relationship with your co-workers and your employees, actually that creates the culture, that actually creates what people are, um, are, are looking to do. Um, and actually, it brings me on to um, uh, the sort of the, the simple solution. So obviously, we can look at Zoom, High Five, Hangouts, Yammer. Um, I talk about business playlists. Actually, if you're in an office or even work, working remotely, you can have a Spotify playlist that actually works to different uh, mellow yellows, regular social events uh, that in, in brings people in. Um, kudos and recognition. 
And that all goes hand in hand. Um, but something I'd like to talk about, and actually this is something that I've championed with businesses, um, and in fact, um, a, a rather large business that I sit on as part of their board um, every two monthly meetings that they have to talk about engagement and actually the culture is actually thinking outside the box. Now, we've got uh, three things on here. So we've got buddy camps, group remote, random treasure packs. OK, so the group, the buddy camps, um, it's quite unique. Um, this is something that we encourage as a business, but also we've engaged and got other businesses doing it where actually we will encourage those members of staff to actually possibly go and work at someone else's area. So if, say, for example, you have two members of staff that were that are based in Fulham in South London, actually they might actually join up and go and work around from their house for a day um, and buddy up. And we call it buddy up camps because we've had um, to the extreme that we've even had 15 people in one household before that were all remote workers that actually decided they all met up. They had a they actually had it as like a camp event in the summer where they all actually brought over tents and stayed over for the night. They all worked. They all Re reacted and it's worked very very well for them um so the group group remote that's also something which is very cool uh, we actually did with uh, another company we gave them the idea they actually um hired a private train line where they had two carriages where for the day all their staff then went to work on the carriages working so they had uh, breakfast dinner lunch all served to them they could work anywhere on the train the train actually went up and down a private line which was two miles long all day totally different so actually it's engaging people in a different way and also also something else that we've encouraged and, and these are three for initiatives that i've worked with companies to create um random treasure packs you know people don't necessarily have to be recognized for doing well actually sometimes people need to be recognized for when the back's against the wall a little bit and it's being a bit tough actually sometimes that can be such a powerful tool that can be the ones that actually can be game changers for people because it's so easy as a as a as a culture to recognize brilliance but actually sometimes are we against not actually recognizing people when it's a little bit downtrodden little bit against uh, against the grain and actually do you know what someone might have done a brilliant piece of work last month but it's finding it a bit difficult actually do you know what well done well done for being part of the team thank you for bringing a positive culture to what we do and actually this is something that actually is, is something that we we channel here um, as a company we do um, when people haven't had their best months rather than um, initially sitting them down and saying why is it not working why is it going wrong actually well done well done for doing your job times are hard here's this and in the random treasure pack it could be food could be a voucher um, it, it could be just about anything that actually is tailor-made to that individual because then it has the personal touch um, and these are these are different initiatives especially for remote workers if they are not fully engaging um, and we have dual as I said, that you have the opportunity to come in and work if you want, or you can work from home. It's no issue. Um, people appreciate this. It's it's making it personal, making it about the culture. And we've actually even had where other members of the team have sent packages to random other workers that haven't even really had full engagement because it's kind of saying, look, I'm here. Uh, you know, we've not really met, but if you need me, I'm here for a chat. If if we need to collaborate on some work, I'm happy to support and actually offer something so, so, totally, totally um, different. And and I think as that moves in quite nicely onto, you know, motivation comes in in, in many forms. Um, and at the end of the day, is it being made to feel valued, ongoing learning development? conversation clarity on culture actually all of this naturally does create this um that that ethos in togetherness when people don't work together all the time actually bringing them together once in a while does 
does the world a good, the social events, not just recognising brilliance, actually recognising people that may be struggling, um, that have had a good run. And actually that that sometimes is, is a more powerful tool than patting someone on the back because they're doing well with their job. And I just think if people can, if we can learn to motivate, and as I say, you know, not send, um, a quote from Muhammad Ali or the Beatles or something like that. I, I believe that you get a better response, and and I can't emphasise it enough that you know if if people are happy in the workplace, they will perform so much better. And I think it's massively important that you use the data around yourselves, whether that's getting feedback from people, talking in the workplace, speaking to people that work for other firms, asking how they do it, um, creating long distance relationships. And also, um, we've got to also remember something as well. Um, remote working isn't necessarily for everyone. Yes, people like the sound of remote workers. People like the sound, oh, brilliant, I can slip out of bed, I can go downstairs, I can put the TV on, I can do the hoover and sit down. Actually, no, it's it's not necessarily like that. And actually, is as it's proven in the early stats, productivity is is massively important and is something that's proven that people get better work. So actually, it's supporting those people through the process of if they are not remote workers, how do they, um, you know, how do you identify hiring? Um, you know, what are you looking for? What are the traits? If you're a non-remote working organization, okay, how do you create that culture? And I believe, you know, from from what we've spoken about here, hopefully there's uh, there's been some skill sets that I've sort of brought to the table that kind of um, not necessarily make people go, okay, that's right or that's wrong, but actually you take information and never dismiss it. Um, always put it on the back burner. If someone has an opinion or gives you an idea that isn't right at the time, please never totally dismiss it. I always say, put it on the back burner because it might not be right at this time now, but that's not to say that that may not work later down the line. So from the, the, the summarize, obviously, that we've spoken about um, all the information is uh, straight in front. So obviously, use data points to pinch the benefits of the remote workers. Um, trust your remote workers. Trust is a massive thing. Show show that you believe in them. How that is measured sometimes is down to you. For us, we measure our employees by their figures in terms of money. They don't have KPIs. They have they have numbers that they need to hit and get into. That is how it's measured. So if that person is a flamboyant worker, they may only make one telephone call that day, but that one telephone call could be the difference that can make them. So actually for me, I measure my guys on results rather than saying, okay, you've only made a certain amount. Um, in terms of remote working, as I've already said, it isn't for everyone. So you need to make sure that you're always um, identify the right per, um, persona before hiring and actually create that mold that you're looking for that people can then step into. Um, and actually, to summarize it quite nicely, you know, remote working is like a long distance relationship. You have to put extra effort to make it work. And I think that's the most important thing is that people get drawn into actually, this is the idea, this is how it works. But actually, is it right? I'm a big champion. I believe that if you work right, if you listen to people, if you take on board other people's ideas, whether that means by talking to them, seeing on social media, understanding what they do, um, I believe that works. And as I say, we sit on the board with companies to change these initiatives um, and to create this, which I'm a real big passion for. So please feel free. Um, if anybody has any questions at the end, obviously, um, to fire into the area now for me and Verity to go over, please connect in with me uh, via LinkedIn. It's always great to hear other people's um, ideas, their perception. Um, actually, bounce some ideas to me because I would love it to create new opportunity for my guys and also the other clients that I work. So I'd love to hear how you guys work. Um, and ultimately, you know, if you want to discuss the here and now of uh, what recruitment and have to offer then uh, more than happy to do so but um everybody um thank you so much for engaging um
for listening to what we said. Hopefully it's not been too boring and it's been a little bit more bubbly. Um, and I uh, hand back to Verity. Thank you so much. Hi, thank you so much, Jamie, for that insightful presentation. And yes, we do have some questions coming through. Um, just, to first, just to start off, actually, uh, Lavina has actually wanted to share that she actually has um, an eight week project cycle where they encourage all remote workers to come into the office where all teams present 20 lowdown on what has been delivered. Um, and they really like to have kind of pizza and a hotel night. So they all get together as a company and that's a real success. So um, I think she wanted to make the point that people really do appreciate the kind of the face to face interaction and the social element. Totally, totally, and 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 obviously piggybacking off the back of that, I do apologise. See, yeah, uh, I haven't actually seen the questions come through, so I, I apologise on that front. Um, but yeah, I totally agree. I think um, that's why we we call it dual office. Um, that everybody has a space in the office. They have their own desk. That actually sometimes that integration, when the chips are down, certainly sometimes that environment is the right environment to come into. And I believe you know creating those initiatives, creating those different environments. I think it's I think it's fantastic, and and I think it has to be done um, regular for for people to get the benefit out of it. Absolutely. And um, you did get a couple of people also saying that they loved some of the options that you've given, particularly buddy camps. Yeah. Um, so kind of moving on, an interesting question that has also come through is about people that expect a London salary, um, but they are remote. <coughs> that's that that is um, that's that's a great show. Who, who was that from? Sorry. That was also from Lavina, actually. Oh, Lavina, Lavina, great, great question. Um, it's it has been a challenge that we've actually faced, um, and it's it's a very, very interesting. It's quite a, a quite a deep one. Um, if you are working for a business that is based in central London, should you get the way in? That is that is ultimately the question, um, and. The answer is, in my opinion, no. And what we've actually done, and, and once again, one of the clients that I spoke about earlier on, is what was actually created was they had a healthier bonus structure. Um, and if they were required to come in, it was fully expense paid. So the reason behind that is they do not have to do the travel. Um, the levy, obviously, the way in as well is based on commuters and having to come into central London. Um, if you can work remotely and you have to work in, um, then this was a uh, was a very good debate. But ultimately, um, what they done and it's worked really well is if they have to travel in or they want to travel in, the company actually pays for their travel, um, which has shown a, a, an increase in actually results for them as well and this has been based on a, a, a six month program that they've done as a trial and it's actually worked out quite well so if that's something that may be of interest to yourself um, I can't give you many other initiatives because other than that on that one occasion is the only time we've come up against it um, but as I say you know if uh, if people were able to work from home and they're not having to travel in um, then, then no I wouldn't give the way in Interesting. And uh, we've had another question here come in, in from Jade. Um, and she actually had a question about the dual working that you guys do. Um, yeah. And her question was, do you pay for all their kits at both the office and at home? For example, like providing two IT setups. And do you take the h &S responsibilities as a result too? Um, so in in terms of um, IT, um, that is very much something um, that is they are given a laptop, they are given a phone, um, and actually we have movable desks, so you know they can take their laptop home with them. So they don't have a um, a dual site um, IT setup. What they have is they have their phone. Uh, which connects through to the main lines, which if they are out of office, they can. When they come into the office, they do have their own 
they have their own phone which connects through to their mobile so even if they are outside in our garden area they can still pick up through that um, so it is only one setup in terms of responsibility on the health and safety when they are on site absolutely that totally falls in to ours um, in terms of working at working remote that's down to them um, but we do cover the technology aspect. So in terms of their phone and their laptops, that's totally covered by us. Um, obviously, Wrigley Pat tested um, and, and covered on that front. Obviously, accidental damage and stuff like that does happen. Um, and, and we will actually even cover that. We've had many a cup of tea spilt on laptops that as much as it gripes me, we're only human and we, we make the mistakes. So from the health and safety aspect, if they're working remote, um, is on them as soon as they enter foot onto our premises um, then that's totally our responsibility. Interesting thank you Jamie. Um, so I think we have time for one more question and um, just had also a few people ask if the recording and the slides will be shared which yes they will um, we'll put them in a blog with a link a YouTube link as well. Um, had a question come through from Avatar, and he is asking, how do you create team spirit with remoted employees? And what are your best practices in relation to this? Okay, um, it, that is a very broad question. Um, and obviously different companies function in, in different ways. I think it is very much remote workers are all very relevant to the environment and what department they work in. Um, so, for example, we deal with a, a financial firm um, and we deal um, with, a, with another firm that has a large sales task force. Now, stereotypically, the sales force tend to be a little bit more of a lively bunch compared to maybe uh, guys that are crunching numbers every day. So it's actually about recognizing the, the personnel in those, um, in those teams um, and actually recognizing that actually how, what makes them tick, what is going to make those people interested. Now, I appreciate if you have two groups of 50 people, not every single one of those people are going to be engaged in sport, movies or whatever. But it's about trying to create uh, a culture um, which might not necessarily be the same thing, but actually everyone can connect to. Um, so that means for us, we sort of vary what we do. Um, so in terms of every month, we will have a, a we call it a gathering. We don't call it social because I think social sometimes can imply that people are going to um, take on lots of alcohol and get drunk, which is something that occasionally that does happen certainly at christmas parties but actually when we talk about social we don't want people just to come up and get involved in alcohol uh, what we want people to do is be sociable with each other uh, we do team building days we do um, adventure parks um, we've done a day where actually we've gone um, with the military and they we've done assault courses uh, bowling um, we've played uh, recently uh, rounders uh, and also what we also do and which is something which always ticks a box um, is we do a Santa run uh, where we work with another charity outside that we actually support them um, in the local area um, that we go around supporting a, a father Christmas that visits uh, streets of uh, deprived areas so every time it's about creating something different and I think culture is is so difficult to get and i think for us that's how it works we offered a, we offer a variety of different things and and interact with people that way brilliant thank you very much so i think that's probably us out of time there are a couple more questions that have come through but jamie i'm sure you'll be happy to follow up in an email um, and continue the conversation um, yeah, online Brilliant. So I just wanted to say, first of all, a massive thank you to yourself for that insightful presentation. And also, of course, to our HR, talent and culture community for tuning in today. Do keep an eye out for the blog and the recording, which will come into your inbox by tomorrow. And if you did, if your question did not get answered, um, please do expect to get an email through from Jamie. Um, he'll be answering that 
to you. So thanks again, and I hope you all have a wonderful, productive day.